Today at shopdap.com, we talk about super pro camber mounts on our all track. Okay, so today we're gonna to be installing camber mounts on our all track. Uh, we already have this shock out. We're gonna discuss that in a second as far as the details of what you need to do to execute this install. But with that said, let's talk about why you would want camber mounts on your vehicle. So. These camber mounts increase camber a, a negative 1.4 degrees of camber on the vehicle. Now it's gonna be on both sides. Camber is not an adjustable angle on the front of these vehicles unless you change to camber mounts on the top. That's a fairly complicated process in the fact that the adjustability of camber mounts is something that generally can't be done unless you hack off the top of your strut mounts. Now, the fixed camber is going to be something that's gonna give you improved handling. Adding negative camber on the vehicle will give you increased turn in and also will increase the feel and, and responsiveness of the vehicle when you're on hard turns. Now, that will mean that under high speeds, you will probably have a little more sensitivity to your steering when you install camber mounts on your car. We already have a full DIY on how to remove and replace complete suspension which we showed in a coilover video, which we will link to in the description below, but a brief overview of how you would do this job would be, you will need to get your vehicle on jack stands, remove your front wheels, loosen the sway bar end links with an 18 millimeter, use a triple square and an 18 millimeter to remove the pinch bolt on the steering knuckle, use the special tool known as the strut spreader tool to open up the knuckle to allow the strut to slide down on the steering knuckle, You'll need to remove the axle either on the inside or the outside. My personal preference is on the inside, which are triple square bolts. And you may need to remove the three ball joint nuts, which mount the ball joint to the control arm. At this point, you'll be able to shake the shock assembly off the steering knuckle and remove it from the vehicle. Okay, so what we're gonna do is remove this strut top. Now, if you are using this on an aftermarket setup like this, we are swapping them out on these coilovers. We've loosened tension on these springs. So when we remove this, there's not gonna be any tension coming in the upward direction. We are going to show it on this. Now, if you had a factory setup and you're removing this on a stock suspension or even a car with just lowering springs, you're likely gonna need a spring compressor holding onto the spring before you even attempt to remove this strut top. Otherwise, this thing could blow off when you loosen this nut and someone could get seriously hurt. So that is important to note. Uh, this car has, these Bilstein coilovers have 22 millimeter nuts on there and then they have a seven millimeter Allen in the center. And so essentially we have this special tool that has a cutout that allows you to put either an Allen key or a wrench into this to allow you to hold the center of this while you loosen this nut. Without that, you might wanna use something like air tools or electric impacts. You can use that to get that off. A lot of people won't have stuff like that, which is why we're showing you this way. Uh, and this will allow you to properly torque it with the appropriate tool. So you would then go in like this, turn it to the side, and then you can hold it like this. So ours is gonna drop in like that. We're gonna put a wrench on here and then hold it and loosen it and turn it the opposite direction. Now when you're loosening this, this is not an easy thing to do. So you're gonna maybe have a friend hold down on this thing and crack it loose. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is turn it like so and you can see it's holding it. Now our particular situation is not ideal. You're really gonna want an Allen key. That way you can re pull it out and reposition it. This is just what we had when we were doing this and that would a seven millimeter that would fit if you had an allen key that would work much better in this particular situation so again we're just turning the nut counterclockwise and then the insert in the center clockwise and this is a 21 millimeter this is going to be the size or 22 millimeter for the bilstein one 21 is going to be what you would likely find on a factory setup and then we also offer 18s and 19s uh, for some other vehicles that use those but if you don't have power tools you're not going to be able to do this job without this so we will cut back once we have this thing off and you can take a look all right once you got your nut off we're pretty loose there and we can swap that off now this is the bushing we're going to be getting rid of this and your strut bearing is something you could reuse i wouldn't advise it especially considering how inexpensive they are and we are going to swap that out and put a new camber mount with our new strut bearing. This is our coilover setup, so it's a little bit different, but we're gonna go with our strut bearing next. We should be able to mount that on there, and then we can put this mount on top. Now, 
This particular setup does seem like it requires a little bit of tension on it. This is a brand new spring. So what I'm just gonna do in this situation is spin our coil over down. We can do that. We have that luxury. Uh, if you are not in this situation and you're doing this, you will need to have your spring compressed to allow you to thread this thing on. All you really need to do is usually get on a thread or two, but what you'll find is on the base of this camber mount, you'll see there's a notch cut into it. Your bearing also has a notch on it. So those line up pretty easily. You can't really mess that up because they won't go on any other way, or at least they won't fit properly. So that should mount pretty easily. And then you should be able to do that, push down and then get your nut on. All right, now, once you get that threaded on there, you should be able to get that, grab this, tighten this thing up as much as possible until the shock starts to spin and the nut, you know, or the nut basically just spins the shock instead of tightening. And then you'll have to get your Allen key in there. Okay, so as we're going back together, you have this thing snugged up as much as possible without using the Allen wrench, then you're gonna add your strut nut socket and then you're gonna get your seven millimeter Allen, at least in our case, a seven millimeter Allen. And then you can torque your new camber mounts in place. Now, uh, a lot of people are gonna wanna use some type of torque spec for this. We will flash the torque spec that's from the factory torque spec in on the screen here. You can check that out. And that's what a lot of people are gonna be going with probably depending on their shock setup. You may wanna go just a few Newton meters more depending on what your setup, but that's the factory one. And we are all torqued down. We're ready to reinstall. We're ready to reinstall our coilover setup. Now you are going to be installing this in the correct orientation or you're gonna to want to make sure you have the orientation where the Super Pro is gonna be facing towards the outside of the vehicle. If you take a look here, you want for negative camber, you want the shock lean or the front struts leaning in. And so you want the orientation of them to be for, further in towards the vehicle. So that's the best way to think of it when you're reinstalling these. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it and links to everything we talked about in the description below.